Welcome to Decoding Debbie. I am Brandon Hay, and you can find me on Twitter at HayB3. And this podcast is brought to you by the ITB guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tons of great content on there. So I can't believe it, but it's already week five for the college football season. A lot happened last week, some good games. So let's uh, review some of those and look towards the next week. So let's look at some of the key performers that have um, that have Devi potential. First of all, Jalen Daniels from Kansas. If you haven't heard of him or watched him, you need to start to. Uh, he's putting up huge numbers for Kansas. Um, one of the reasons that Kansas is 4-0, and he's kind of uh, you know a dark horse to – uh, make a push for the Heisman. He had 407 total yards and five touchdowns this week. Uh, his great dual threat has over 80 rushing yards in each game. Uh, pretty good completion percentage. So he's one of those quarterbacks that could kind of move up charts uh, for possibly uh, the NFL draft in uh, 2023. Sam Hartman for Wake Forest. Him and uh, DJU had a uh, back and forth um high power you know high powered uh, offenses going back and forth um when Clemson faced Wake Forest I was surprised by this but Hartman had 347 total yards six touchdowns DJU 423 yards and five touchdowns so big games by both that game went into overtime Blake Corum uh, had a big game against Maryland. The Michigan offense didn't run uh, as perfect as it has been, but he had 30 attempts for 243 yards and two touchdowns. Big for Blake um, with Donovan Edwards out to be able to um, show that he can have that heavy workload, and he just continue, continues to show that he has the explosion and the speed to take uh, runs distance, but also it, for his size has good power. Um, to run between tackles, obviously you don't want a ton of that, but um, definitely I think he, he is going um, moving up. Jaden Ott, freshman for California that I really liked before the season. Uh, he's been scoring touchdowns but not necessarily getting the yards. Well, this week he did 19 attempts for 274 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, he's playing very well for California. Their offense is a lot better this year, so he's a player to look out for. Um, since he's only a freshman, has to be in college for three years, but go ahead and keep an eye out for him. Marshawn Lloyd against Charlotte had a huge game with 15 attempts for 160, 169 yards and three touchdowns for South Carolina. Israel Abinakanda uh, for Pittsburgh had a huge game with uh, you know Rodney Hammonds out since that first week. He's really taken over that backfield. With uh, 19 attempts for 177 yards and four touchdowns, <clears throat> Jackson Smith and Jigba was out, so Mika Ibuka has really taken over that kind of role that he does. He had six receptions for 118 yards and two touchdowns. He's had a very good season so far. Looking at the games, um, Wisconsin versus Ohio State. I thought Ohio State would win pretty easily, and they did. Um, the score wasn't even this close. Wisconsin scored some touchdowns late in the second half. Ohio State jumped out early. Um, Wisconsin just can't score. Braylon Allen is a very good player, but just running the ball, they they couldn't do it. Graham Mertz has been continues to be a disappointment. I was high on him before last year, but he just hasn't developed. I don't know if that's Wisconsin not developing him. He's just not as talented, but he's not playing well, and Wisconsin's all, offense um, just isn't doing it. So – Ohio State continued to roll there. Uh, Clemson versus Wake Forest talked about the two quarterbacks. This game surprised surprised me some because I thought it'd be lower scoring. I thought Hartman would throw for three hundred yards, but you know not as many points. Went into overtime, and uh, Wake Wake Forest uh, couldn't score at the end. So Clemson ended up uh, you know winning this game. DJU didn't have the greatest completion percentage, but made big plays. Uh, make good throws. So he's trending up a little more to be back on Debbie radars, 
but we need to see this more than one week um, and be able to uh, show that and you know be a little more efficient. Um, race completion percentage, he's around 64% for the season, but definitely uh, you know in the right direction. Florida versus Tennessee. Um, Tennessee was winning this one pretty easily throughout, but Florida was able to get an onside kick at the end and had a chance, but ended up not being able to complete the comeback. Anthony Richardson um, had some mistakes, but he had over 400 passing yards, was more like himself, showed trending in the right direction. Obviously not as high as that week one uh, Utah game would suggest, but definitely in the right direction. He's probably going to have up and down games this whole season, but you're going to see that potential. And Tennessee just keeps on scoring. They were uh, The Florida defense was not good, and Tennessee was able to score quickly. And then Florida kind of uh, possessed the ball for longer drives, how they kind of stayed close enough to have a chance at the end. Arkansas, Texas A&M. Arkansas jumped out to a huge lead. And then K.J. Jefferson tried to jump from the three- or four-yard line Ended up fumbling the ball on the goal line. Texas A&M ran it back, and then um, there's a, a nice play by a defender, take the ball out of um, the other defender's hand and run it back for a touchdown, totally changed the game, and then Arkansas ended up losing on a missed field goal at the end. If that doesn't happen, I think Arkansas probably wins easily on that one. So a big win for Texas A&M, had two straight back-to-back wins. Their offense still isn't great. Their defense and their running game is really helping. And Texas A&M has had two top 25 wins last two weeks after losing to Appalachian State. Oregon and Washington State. Washington State was controlling this game all throughout. And then uh, they had a costly three and out. Oregon hit a big play. And then uh, Cam Ward threw a pick six that uh, helped Oregon win this game. Some other games of note. Miami lost their second in a row to Middle Tennessee State. The offense looked bad. Tyler Van Dyke got pulled. So there is some worry for uh, the Hurricanes. Uh, talked about Michigan and Maryland earlier. But Maryland played very well. It was Michigan's first test. Uh, defense was up and down. But I think Maryland it, you know, looks like they're much better than years past where they're They'd be good early on and then kind of fizzle throughout the rest of the season. So I see them um, being very competitive the rest of the way and being a, you know, a possible 9-10 to 10 win team. Um, USC held on to beat Oregon State in a low-scoring affair, 17-14. to 14. Um, You know, I think Oregon State is a good team, and USC not overly impressive, but this is probably in years past when they would have lost this game. So it's important for them to keep it going and staying undefeated. Another game, Kansas State, after losing uh, two weeks ago, went in to beat Oklahoma. Um, Adrian Martinez had a great game, ran the ball well, was able to make some uh, great throws, um, kind of showed you know, what his ceiling could be in that game, a great game, and you know, um, Oklahoma struggled some on offense. Texas ended up losing in overtime to Texas Tech. Kansas, you know, I talked about them earlier. They keep it going, winning uh, their fourth game, 4-0 against Duke, but they're still not in the top 25. There's been a lot of talk this week that they should be, but if they can keep it rolling, then uh, they'll get in there. But it's a a very good story and, you know, a very uh, exciting team. So week five, we have um, five Matchups of top 25 teams. We have Alabama versus Arkansas. We'll have to see how Arkansas bounces back from that Texas A&M loss. Um, see how that defense does against Alabama. Very interested if um, for Alabama if Ja'Cory Brooks can have another uh, big game. He had over 100 yards and a touchdown against Vanderbilt. So they're really trying to find that wide receiver to uh, you know just be consistent and give Bryce Young someone to go for like he had last year with Jamison Williams. Arkansas has been able to run the ball very well, but we'll see how K.J. Jefferson and Raheem Sanders does against Alabama. It'll be a very interesting game. Then Clemson plays NC State. This There might be some weather with this, um, with uh, the hurricane coming, but <clears throat> I think this will be a more defensive game as uh, both defenses are very good. Um, it's big for DJU to see how he can do against a very good defense. Can you know he probably won't put up the numbers he did against Wake Forest, 
But if he can put up another solid game, obviously uh, Devi up, you know, radar up. See if Devin Leary can kind of get back on stage of the hype before the season. Um, he's played well against bad teams, but we'll see if he can do well in this one. Um, I think that Clemson was, is still going to come away with this one, but I think it could be a very close game. Then Kentucky goes to Ole Miss. Ole Miss really hasn't been tested. Uh, I think Kentucky's going to win this game. Uh, I, I am interested how uh, Ole Miss does with Jackson Dart and Zach Evans and um, all their weapons. But I do think that Will Levis will be able to do enough for Kentucky. They've got a lot of those young receivers really uh, playing well. Um, so we'll see how they do. And Chris Rodriguez, their running back that has not played this season, is uh, finally cleared to play. So that should help their offense. Oklahoma State versus Baylor, not a lot of big names in this. Um, but I think Oklahoma State's defense is going to be enough to take uh, Baylor even on the road. Um, I think there'll be a lot of running in this game. Um, both teams like to run the ball. So I see that with this. And um, Oklahoma State needs to win this one to stay, uh, you know, in front in the Big 12. And then lastly, Wake Forest, after that close loss to Clemson, is going to play Florida State. It's on Saturday. Um, still not moving the game Uh because of the hurricane, there have been a couple other Florida teams that have changed to play on Sunday. Florida plays Eastern Washington on Sunday, and UCF plays SMU on Sunday. So we'll see um, if weather really changes this game. But I could actually see this being a pretty high-scoring affair. Um, Florida State has been a real surprise. This will be another test for them as they've beaten LSU before, but not really played much else. So a very interesting game uh, for that. So some IDPs to watch. Um, Will Anderson Jr., I mean, he doesn't really need to be watched. He's been great past, but really hasn't been able to get the, the stats. Um, he had two tackles and three sats versus Vanderbilt, so he really got it going. Um, I've been Pace Jr., Cincinnati. Uh, he's a linebacker. I've talked about him before, but he had 11 tackles and three sats versus Indiana. Um, he's always has a large num number of tackles, someone to really look for in next year's draft. Antonio Johnson, I talked about in preseason. He's safety for Texas A&M. He had 11 tackles versus Arkansas. He just shows up all over the field. Uh, David Igwebba, uh, I don't know if I said that name right, but uh, for Oklahoma, a linebacker, he had 10 tackles. He, he has uh, been all over the field this season. So um, we've seen Oklahoma linebackers kind of come in the league um, uh, with good speed and be able to go sideline to sideline. So, We'll see if he can continue that. And then lastly, uh, Darius Joyner, uh, safety for Duke. He had 11 tackles. He's been very productive all over the field. Um, so see where if he'll continue to rise possibly up board. So those are some of the IDP players to watch from this past week. And this is a new segment, De Debbie Movers, Debbie players that think are you know, moving up or down. So Marshawn Lloyd from South Carolina a uh, high-level recruit when he came out, uh, has really dealt with injuries and everything. The South Carolina team is not very good. Uh, they have a bad offensive line. Um, but this week he did have 169 yards and three touchdowns running the ball. Uh, he hasn't been able to really rush the ball for a lot of yards before this, um, but he's shown flashes of what he can do. Just happy that he's all actually on the field performing. And before this game, he had had 10 receptions for 104 yards and a touchdown. He uh, really showed his receiving against Arkansas early in that game. So that's good. He's going to be one where you just want to put something on the tape. Um, and for the next level, um, he has a lot of the traits. So obviously he doesn't have the overall production since he's been hurt. But it's nice to see him, even on a bad team, doing well. Marvin Mims from Oklahoma is uh, with the new – you know, offense coaching staff has done really well this year. He has 18 receptions for 397 yards and three touchdowns in uh, four games. He is 65 yards or more in each game, which is big because sometimes he would disappear last year. Um, he's on pace to uh, more than double his receptions in uh, his either of his freshman or sophomore year. So he's definitely moving up, up boards as well. 
And then Blake Corum, as I said, you know, he shows explosion, had a ton of carries this last game, is the main guy for Michigan this year. Um, they don't really throw it to him a ton, but I think at the next level he could be really good at that. And I think some of the other running backs um, in the top five have not necessarily uh, proven themselves. So I think Blake Corum could get into that top five conversation in NFL draft. One of the running backs that I'm going to talk about later has really not um, bounced back this year. So now let's look at the Debbie um, movers that are down. Uh, Quinn Johnston, someone I really liked before the season, a lot of people did with the new offense. Uh, you know, with Sonny Dykes coming in from SMU, we thought he would really blow up and show everything that he's he's done before. Um, he's getting the opportunity. He has 16 targets, leads the team, but only has eight catches for 73 yards, no touchdowns. There are four players with more receiving yards than him. I don't really know what's going on with that. So just look for that, and then he could definitely fall down fall down um, where I thought he could be the third wide receiver this coming year. But right now it looks like Josh Downs and Jordan Addison are definitely ahead of him. Then uh, Spencer Rattler, you know that you know he came in highly touted. His freshman year at Oklahoma played well but had a couple of down games. Then last year ended up being benched for Caleb Williams. Uh, we knew he was going to transfer. A little surprised he went to South Carolina, but he really needed to produce and play well to raise his stock. Hasn't really done much this year. I know South Carolina is not good, but you would hope that he could perform better. Uh, he has two touchdowns to five interceptions, and he only has one game over 300 yards, and that was against Arkansas. A lot of that you know, um, was late in the game when the game was well in hand. And – Two of his four games are against lower-level teams, Charlotte and Georgia State, and he has not uh, you know, lit up the scoreboard for those. So he's going to really have to do a lot at this back end of the year uh, to raise his draft stock, or he might need to return for his senior year. And lastly, Tank Bigsby, another team that is bad. Auburn's offense is very bad. He is, for the whole season, he's averaging 4.9 yards per carry. But if you take out the first game where he had a huge game versus Mercer, uh, he is only averaging 3.3 yards per carry the other three games. And he has 52 yards or under in the last three games. So he really needed a bounce back year to show that production. Um, like I said, it's not totally his fault, but still he's not able to show his skill set really with um, all of this. So it will be interesting how the NFL really views him. Um if he stays healthy all this year, it obviously help. And but you know, even staying healthy, it's not showing the productivity that he did his freshman year. All right, start sets had a rough week last week, so um, ended up going uh, two out of nine because EJ Smith for Stanford uh, didn't play; he was a set, and he's out for the season. Big blow to him. So. Uh, Boston College continues to struggle. Zay Flowers, not a great game. Henry Parrish, Miami struggled. Quan Finn didn't have the game that I thought he would. Jalen McMillan, um, Washington looked good, but he wasn't really involved. And John Rich Plumley didn't have a huge game either. Uh, set, I was right on the Deuce Vaughn. He did have, I believe, over 100 yards, but he didn't score. Um, didn't have that big running back game. Braylon Allen ended up with a top 24 week, albeit in garbage time. That still counts. Totally wrong with Sam Hartman. This one was really rough because I sat him in the league. Um, and Keaton Mitchell, I was right because he did not do much against Navy. So I was two out of nine this week, 22%. That brings me down to 14 out of 28 overall, 50%. So let's hope that I can bounce back this week. So here's my starts, Dalton Kincaid versus Oregon State. Uh, Oregon State is 71st versus the pass, and Brent Queef, uh, Kuth, however you say his last name, uh, the other tight end is out for the season, so it's going to be the Dalton Kincaid show. They really throw the tight ends a lot, so I, I see him doing really well this week. Uh, Keaton Mitchell for East Carolina, I think, is going to have a bounce back game. USF gives up. Uh, gave up 283 rush yards to Louisville last week. They're not a very good team right now. 
Um, so I, I see that happening. Um, and, and especially if there's any weather because they're moving the game to Boca or Tom, but even if there is any bad weather, you know, more running game. Um, so I have Talia uh, against Michigan State. There's questions if he's going to play. Obviously, that would be the thing. But if he plays, I want to start him. Michigan State's pass defense is still bad. And I think he looked good and crisp uh, last week against Michigan. So I have him. Um, Cam Camper for uh, Indiana has been really, really good um, lately. Um, he has eight or more receptions in three out of the Indians four games and 90 plus in three, uh, 90 plus yards in three of the four games in Nebraska is 124th versus the pass. They made some coaching changes. We'll see it, what that really does, but I have Cam Camper having a very good game. And lastly, my start is Chase Brown versus Wisconsin for Illinois. Um, he's Illinois is everything on offense. Uh, I, he's someone that I really like moving up boards to for the draft next year. Uh, usually, you know, playing against Wisconsin defense, I would be a little bit worried, but this year they're 62nd in rush defense, giving up 144 rush yards per game. And they gave up 258 rush yards versus the Buckeyes, two 100 yard rushers. Uh, Chase Brown, you know, has been scoring a touchdown every game and he's a lot of their offense and he'll be heavily involved. So now for the sets, Brad Roberts versus Navy has had a very good uh, season, getting a lot of rush yards. Uh, Navy is only giving up 97 yards per rush. Most of it's through the pass. Um, and they were giving up uh, 131 last year. So they've improved this year. Um, last year, uh, Brad Roberts was held under 100 yards. He did have two touchdowns, but um, I think that uh, he he won't be in the top 24 this week. Uh, Carson Steele versus Northern Illinois. I think he's going to get a lot of volume, might get close to 100 yards, but uh, Northern Illinois is only allowing 127 rush yards per game. Ball State's offense is just not good enough, and it doesn't score enough points for the scoring opportunities for Carson Steele to be in the top 24. Another running back, Richard Reese out of Baylor. Oklahoma State is only giving up 126.5 rush yards per game. Um, I see this possibly as a lower scoring game. I just don't think Richard Reese will be in the top 24. Next is A.T. Perry for Florida State. A lot was um, hope for him uh, coming back this year, but then Hartman was out early. But in the three games with Santa Hartman, he has 27 targets, but only 13 receptions. And also, I'm worried about that weather. Um, and Hartman seems to be throwing to other targets more. I don't know um, if it's just uh, better coverage on Perry this year, but he I don't see him going in the top 24. And actually, surprised to see Florida State's actually pretty good against the pass. Lastly, DJU versus NC State, even after that big game last week, um, NC State's a top. 34 pass defense, only giving up 202 yards per game. So really, uh, you know, I think in this one, you'd just be hoping he throws a ton of touchdown passes, and I'm not um, willing to really um, bank on that until DJU shows me multiple games where he can do that. All right, the bets from last week. I had uh, Oklahoma uh, minus 13 versus Kansas State. Very wrong on that. Kansas State won by seven. I had UCLA by twenty by uh, over twenty one, and they did beat Colorado by twenty eight. I had UNLV beating Utah State by two and a half, and they won by ten. And then I had the total of the Kent State Georgia game under sixty two and a half. Barely got that with sixty one. Surprised that Kent State was able to score twenty two points against that Georgia defense, but um, I'll take it. So I was three and one this week. You know, um, six and ten. Overall, raising a little bit, but uh, a strong performance this week. Hopefully, we can keep it going for this coming week. So, these are the week five bets I like. I like Houston um, as a two and a half favorite at home versus Tulane. Houston has struggled, but you know, um, I, I think they'll take this. Only need to win by field goal. That large uh, margin of victory, I'm comfortable with. Uh, I still think they'll be able to score. I just don't think Tulane um, has offense, even though Houston's defense has been playing poorly. Um, Kansas plays Iowa State. Iowa State travels to Kansas. So because they're at home, I like Kansas. They're um, plus three. 
So I like Kansas to not only cover but win this game. I think their offense has played very well. They're at home. Uh, I see them keep rolling. Uh, Indiana at Nebraska, the line is 60. Um, I have the under for this. Um, even though Nebraska's defense is very poor, I don't think Indiana is super explosive. And, I, you know, Nebraska's offense is up and down, so I don't see it getting over 60. And lastly, uh, Wake Forest and FSU. Um, first I did this was before the weather, so this might – I might take an L on this one, but as long as weather holds up, it's not too bad. I have the over of 65. I just see both offenses being able to perform very well, but we'll have to see with the weather. All right, so my DraftKings lineup, uh, Drake May in a losing effort. Another great game, Will Shipley, a great game, over 100 yards rushing um, in a rushing touchdown. Singleton didn't do much for Central Michigan. That was wrong. Um, Hyatt versus Florida, not much. Uh, Xavier Worthy, I believe, was injured in this game. Michael Mayer had a big game, uh, 88 yards on seven receptions for a touchdown. Nathaniel Pete was okay, uh, 14.7. He had a huge fumble at the end of the Auburn game. Um, if he got that touchdown, he would have been over 20. And then uh, Peyton Thorne of Michigan State just looked horrible against Minnesota. They only scored late in that game, so it was 34 to nothing most of that game. So I was definitely wrong on that. So um, got probably three right um, out of these eight. So that's just not good enough. So let's see if we can improve this week. So yet again, with um, this might be a change. If I do change this lineup, if Talia is out, then I'll post on Twitter. Um, but I like him against uh, Michigan State. With his salary, Deuce Vaughn against Texas Tech. I really uh, like like him to do do well. Thought I had a note on Deuce Vaughn, but I do not. Uh, Taj Brooks, I like versus Kansas State. So the two running backs going back and forth. Taj Brooks has four plus receptions in the last three games, so it gives you a good floor, and he's I've been able to get in zone. Charlie Jones uh, versus Minnesota. He still gets a huge touch targets last week even with Aiden O'Connell out so I really like him Dane Key for Kentucky he's a def talented freshman he's been playing very well and I like that price point of 5700 Roman Wilson 4400 doesn't get a ton of targets but he's the big play guy uh, his average actually went down last week because um, you know some shorter passes but he's the big play guy um I could see them running a couple of trick plays like they did uh, against Iowa last year. Uh, so I see him, um, you know, being a good flyer at that at that price. Then Miles Price for Texas Tech. Um, he's the main receiver there. And then I did put Sam Hartman in there, even though I said, um, you know, uh, Perry wasn't going to have a great game. I think Hartman could, all depending on the weather. I paid extra for that. So, uh, you know, obviously – Watch out for a possible change in lineup on Saturday. All right, prize picks. So I had Sam Hartman over 294.5. He was over that with 337. I had Bohannon under under 184.5, well under. He only had 62 yards and was pulled from the game. I was wrong on the Nakia Watson. He only had 12 carries for 36 yards, even though he had a touchdown. And I was right about Derek Schrader as Syracuse keeps rolling. He had 288 total yards, 277 through the pass. So three and one. So this week, uh, raising my percentage up to 40%. So trying to keep on getting up to that 50%. These are my picks for this week. J.J. McCarthy for 15 fantasy points against Iowa. Um, <clears throat> might not be a huge scoring affair, but if he gets, he's had 200 pass yards per game. Um, so that'll give you eight points right there. If you throw in a touchdown, you're just one touchdown. You're almost there. So I think he's going to get more. Dalton Kincaid has, uh, over 65 yards, two of the four games. And that was with, um, Brian Keith. So with him out, I see him getting the over and we've already kind of talked about him in the starts. I have Terrence Ferguson uh, less than 31.5 receiving yards. 
His high is just 37 receiving yards for the season uh, for a game, and he has two under 30 yards. Um, this is probably a toss-up, but I, I I feel confident that he won't be able to get this. Um, and then I have Devin Chain at over 81 and a half rushing yards. Mississippi State's allowing 150, 115 rush yards per game, which isn't a lot, but obviously still over that number. And uh, Chain has over 80 yards last two games. So that is the preview for week five. Um, it should be another good week of college football. Hopefully the weather doesn't affect too many games, but another great week. So uh, again, I'm Brandon Hay and uh, find me on Twitter at HayB3. Make sure to like and subscribe to the, to the IDP guys channel and we'll see you guys next week.